Stephen Johnson Field November 4, 1816, to April 9, 1899, was an American jurist. He was an Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court from March 10, 1863, to December 1, 1897, the second longest tenure of any justice. Prior to this appointment, he was the fifth Chief Justice of California. Early life and education Born in Haddam, Connecticut, he was the sixth of the nine children of David Dudley Field I, a Congregationalist minister, and his wife Submit Dickinson. His family produced three other children of major prominence in 19th century America, David Dudley Field II the prominent attorney, Cyrus Field the millionaire investor and creator of the Atlantic Cable, and Rev. Henry Martin Field a prominent clergyman and travel writer. He grew up in Stockbridge, Massachusetts, and went to Turkey at 13 with his sister Amelia and her missionary husband, Rev. Josiah Brewer. He received a B.A. from Williams College, Williamstown, Massachusetts, in 1837. While attending Williams College he was one of the original founders of Delta Upsilon Fraternity. After reading law in Albany with Harmanus Bleeker and New York City with his brother David Dudley II, Stephen and David practiced law together until 1848 when Stephen went west to California in the Gold Rush. <laughs> <laughs> Career in California politics and law In California, Field's legal practice boomed and he was elected alcalde, a form of mayor and justice of the peace under the old Mexican rule of law, of Marysville. Curiously, he was elected alcalde just three days after his arrival in Marysville. Because the Gold Rush City could not afford a jail, and it cost too much to transport prisoners to San Francisco, Field implemented the whipping post, believing that without such a brutal implement many in the rough and tumble city would be hanged for minor crimes. The voters sent him to the California State Assembly in 1850 to represent Yuba County, but he lost a race the next year for the state Senate. His successful legal practice led to his election to the California Supreme Court in 1857, serving six years. During his time on the Supreme Court of California, Field had a special coat made with pockets large enough to hold two pistols so that he could shoot at his various enemies through the pockets. In 1858 he was challenged to a duel by a fellow judge William T. Barber but at the dueling ground, neither man fired his gun. In 1859 Field replaced the former Chief Justice of the California Supreme Court, David S. Terry because Judge Terry killed a United States Senator from California David Colbreth Broderick in a duel and left the state. Oddly, Field and Terry's paths crossed again 30 years later when Field, acting in his capacity as a judge of the Ninth Federal Circuit Court, ruled against Terry in a convoluted divorce case and had him sent to jail for contempt of court as well. Seeking revenge, Terry attempted to kill Field in 1889 near Stockton, California, but was instead shot dead by Justice Field's bodyguard, U.S. Marshal David B. Neagle (1847–1925). Ironically, legal issues arising from the killing of Mr. Terry came before the Supreme Court in the 1890 habeas corpus case of In re Neagle. To no one's surprise, the Supreme Court ruled the Attorney General of the United States had authority to appoint U.S. Marshals as bodyguards to Supreme Court justices and Marshal Neagle had acted within the scope of his authority in shooting former Judge Terry. U.S. Supreme Court Justice On March 6, 1863, Abraham Lincoln appointed Field to the newly created 10th Supreme Court seat, to achieve both regional balance he was a Westerner and political balance he was a Democrat, albeit a Unionist one. The appointment would also give the court someone familiar with real estate and mining issues. Field was confirmed by the United States Senate on March 10, 1863, and received his commission the same day. According to journalist Brian Doherty, Field was one of the pioneers of the concept beloved by many libertarian legal thinkers of substantive due process—the notion that the due process protected by the Fourteenth Amendment applied not merely to procedures but to the substance of laws as well. Field's vocal advocacy of substantive due process was illustrated in his dissents to the Slaughterhouse Cases and Munn v. Illinois. 
In the Slaughterhouse cases, Justice Field's dissent focused on the Privileges or Immunities Clause, not the Due Process Clause which was important in the dissent of Justice Bradley as well as the dissent of Justice Swain. In both Munn v. Illinois and Mugler v. Kansas, Justice Field based his dissent on the protection of property interests by the Due Process Clause. One of Field's most notable opinions was his majority opinion in Penoyer v. Neff, which set the standard on personal jurisdiction for the next 100 years. His views on due process were eventually adopted by the court's majority after he left the Supreme Court. In other cases he helped end the income tax Pollock v. Farmers Loan and Trust Company, limited antitrust law United States v. E.C. Knight Company, and limited the power of the Interstate Commerce Commission. He dissented in the landmark case Strouder v. West Virginia, where the majority opinion held that the exclusion of African Americans from juries violated the 14th Amendment's Equal Protection Clause. He also joined the case Plessy v. Ferguson that upheld racial segregation. Early in his career, Field wrote opinions against California's laws discriminating against the Chinese immigrants to that state. Serving as an individual jurist in district court, he notably struck down the so-called Pigtail Ordinance in 1879, which was regarded as discriminating against Chinese, making him unpopular with the Californian public. However, as a member of the U.S. Supreme Court, he penned opinions infused with racist anti-Chinese American rhetoric, most notably in his majority opinion in the Chinese exclusion case, Chai Chan Ping v. United States, 130 U.S. 581 1889, and in his dissent in Chu Hiang v. United States, 112 U.S. 536 1884. Field insisted on breaking John Marshall's record of 34 years on the court, even though he was not able to handle the workload. His colleagues asked him to resign due to his being intermittently senile but he refused, staying on until 1897. He lived only two years more, dying in Washington, D.C., and was buried there in the Rock Creek Cemetery. Justice Field's aspirations to become Chief Justice went unfulfilled, as he had made many enemies both political and personal. He is the second longest serving associate justice. Field wrote 544 opinions, more than any other justice save for Justice Samuel Miller. By comparison, Chief Justice Marshall wrote 508 opinions in his 34 years on the court. Associate Justice David Josiah Brewer was Justice Field's nephew. Other notable relatives include Paul Stephen Field and legal scholar Ann Field. In November 1885, Field served as an original trustee of Leland Stanford Junior University. Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>